All right. Well, it is uh, an old cliche that I'm sure everyone is tired of hearing. Uh, and that is that Kirk is the best player who has yet to have a belt in this league, uh, yet to have a trivia belt at least. But I'm sure that there is no one uh, who is more tired of hearing it than Kirk. Um, and Kirk, you have another chance here. You're playing Tony. Um, he's a good player, but you've been in this spot before. He hasn't. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good. I'm excited for this match. Um, one of our first matches of the season. Uh, glad to have you here. We're lawyered up and ready to go. I've had a bad week. Uh, I had COVID. Uh, we had like a foot of snow. I drew the number one spot in the free for all or the last one standing, whatever we call it. So I got to turn things around now and I want to do it in this match. Um, yeah, uh, I was not happy with my performance overall last year and I'm looking to uh, change my, my fortune here uh, this year. Start with this match. So uh, Tony's a great guy, great player. Uh, excited to play him. Uh, definitely earned this spot here. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's go. Flu game incoming. Good luck, Tony. Better luck, Kirk. What's up, Multiplex Warzone? Tony here. Uh, you know, just uh, don't have a lot to say. Kirk's a great player. We've played each other before in other leagues, and uh, he's come out on top. So I'm hoping to kind of reverse reverse that trend and uh, get, you know, another win under my belt. So. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex Movie Warzone. We are back with another match in the new season. Today we have Kirk Kowalkowski versus Tony Durso. Uh, this is going to be a great match. Before I get started, on the desk with me, I've got uh, Mr. Dylan Van Thine. Uh Dylan, how you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, this should be interesting. This is, I guess, as you call it, this is sort of like old guard versus the new guard. Uh, both these guys coming off some pretty impressive wins. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how this goes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, without further ado, we might as well get going. So we will bring in our competitors, uh, and we will get into the first round. Round number one uh, will work as it always does. You'll get eight different questions in eight different categories. If you get it right, you get a point. You get it wrong, you don't get a point. you got to write it down on your whiteboard. If you get all eight questions correct, you will be issued a bonus question, also worth one point. Uh, and you have three repeats and a challenge to use throughout the match. Any questions before we get going? No. All right, then I will hit you with your first question, which comes in every Kirk's favorite category of movie release dates. Uh, the day after tomorrow was released in what year? Uh, I this this movie is not good, right? No, like, but it's it's felt a lot like this movie recently and where I live, just with how cold well, it's been. As I was going to say, fellow Canadian, I can fully sympathize. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll start with Kirk. So 2009. And Tony. 2004. 2004 is correct. All right. So the next question will come in the category of 90s. What city does the McAllister family plan on traveling to for Christmas in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York? Uh, I, I think I like the first Home Alone more. I haven't seen the second one in forever. I don't know if I've seen the second one. I know I've seen the first one, and I, I like it. I mean, my favorite Home Alone movie is Better Watch Out, because it's basically yes. Home Alone, but with murder. Uh, five... <laughs> Four, I just say yes. I don't even three, like that movie. <laughs> two. Oh, it's great. One pens down. Uh, Tony. Miami. And Kirk. I said London. Miami is the correct answer. So we will get into question number three in the category of actors and actresses. Who appears in the films John Wick, Aquaman, and The Fault in Our Stars? Three very similar films. Three in incredibly that, similar films. In that and they I'll all have one person. actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And nothing else. Absolutely. I mean, two of them did come out in the same year. That's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, can I get one. a repeat? Absolutely. Yep. That'll be Tony's first repeat. Your question once again. Who appears in the films John Wick, Aquaman, and The Fault in Our Stars? I actually really like two of these, and I've also seen Aquaman. <laughs> uh, I have to um, watch that one recently. 
or I have it's, to watch it soon. I'm not excited. It's not great. Like, I know people that love it, and I think it's just fine. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. We'll go to Kirk. Willem Dafoe. And Tony. I said Bridget Moynihan. I thought you said actress. Uh, we just said who. Oh, uh, oh. The classic, the classic no help whatsoever well, of who. Man, uh, Willem Dafoe is repeat. the correct answer. Oh, wait, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question comes in the category of horror. What is Chris McNeil's profession in The Exorcist? Uh, you know, this is going to come as a shock to everyone who watches Multiplex oh, no. Entertainment. Uh, I've never seen this movie. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were going to say you didn't like it. I was about to no, get very sad. I, mean, I don't have the... I know I won't. Here's the thing. I know <laughs> I won't. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Tony. Actress. And Kirk. Actress. Both correct. So we get to your next question, which is in the category of drama, also known as movies. Uh, <laughs> what decade does Good Night and Good Luck take place in? It's just the standard thing. Like, like it's been said before, the category of drama could be like literally any movie <laughs> that isn't a comedy. <laughs> That's Especially when you favorite. go off of the genres on IMDb. The odds that drama is going to be up there, <laughs> ex extremely high. Five, yeah. four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Kirk. 1960s. And Tony. 1950s. 1950s is the correct answer. All right. Next question comes in the category of quotes. What classic film contains the following quote? I've decided to become a mensch. You know what that means? A human being. So I assume this is a movie about uh, the person who writes the dictionary and they're just explaining all of the words. Yes. I, th I thought that was, <laughs> I don't I have nothing I to go off with that. a funnier joke. Uh, yes, and five, working on my improv. Four, <laughs> three, two, one pens down. We'll go to Tony. I said the apartment. And Kirk. The apartment. Both are correct. Uh, as we get into your penultimate question in the round, which will come in the category of directors. And it is simply, who directed 2018's A Wrinkle in Time? Uh, this movie sucks. <laughs> I've seen it more than once. Because I'm the guy that uses Disney live action and fandom all the time. You poor thing. I'm, I'm a I'm sad, really, sad man. Looking at all the uh, movies I need to watch for fandom, I'm really not looking forward to this yeah, shit. It's, uh, I don't know why we do it sometimes. Five, <laughs> four, three. Give me a repeat. Two. All right, that is Kirk's first repeat. Your question once again, who directed 2018's A Wrinkle in Time? And I just completely messed up the wheel and need to fix it. <laughs> so that's fun. You love doing it live. Luckily, we got the time. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Kirk. Couldn't pull the first name. And Tony. Ava DuVernay. Yep. Ava DuVernay is correct as we get into your final question. Uh, in sci-fi fantasy, what is the name of the Goblin King in Labyrinth? This movie is just a classic. I've seen it's, Chance it's, Labyrinth. It, the, the way I've described this movie before is, does this movie make sense? I don't know. But is it good? Yes. <laughs> I enjoy it even if I don't get it. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Tony. Jareth. And Kirk. Said Jared. Jareth is correct. So at the end of round number one, I have Tony at seven, Kirk at three. Is that what you have, Dylan? Yes, that's what I have. All right. So the score is seven to three for Tony going into round number two, the wheel round. Uh, We're going to bring up the wheel from wheeldecide.com. Uh, your categories today on the wheel 
are Audrey Hepburn, acting Oscars, recent releases, sports, pre-2000 Pacino, post-2000 Amir Khan, crime, and comic book movies. Uh, round number two, worth the way it always does, uh, the player in the lead can choose whether they would like to spin first or defer. Uh, whichever player spins, if you like what you get on your first spin, you can keep it or you can spin again. You will then get five questions in whatever category you get. Uh, you can either answer it right away for two points or you can go to multiple choice for one. But be warned, stealing is available. So if you miss, your opponent can steal the points. Uh, Tony, you are in the lead, so you can choose whether you would like to go first or defer. Uh, I would like to defer. All right, then we will bring in Scott Harvey uh, for Kirk's first spin. One game left, Kirk. Which is away. Your first spin lands on comic book movies. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I think given the position you're in, we need to take a risk and try to go for something a little bit better, even though I know you're okay at this. Yeah. Um, so let's spin again. I agree. Let's respin. All right, spinning again. Whatever you land on, you are stuck with. Uh, and fate would have it that you are answering right. questions about comic book movies. All right. You got this. Uh, Dylan, do you want to give Kirk his questions in comic book movies? Sure. All right, Kirk, your questions in the category of comic book movies. First one is, who provides the voice of Johann Krauss in Hellboy 2, The Golden Army? Multiple choice. Your options are A, Steve Carell, B, Bill Hader, C, Seth MacFarlane, or D, Alan Tudyk? C. That is correct for one point. All right. Next question. In Wanted, what is the name of the group of assassins Wesley joins? I could reread that because I stumbled over it. But. In Wanted, what is the name of the group of assassins Wesley joins? Multiple choice. Is it A, the Fraternity, B, the League, C, the Creed, or D, the Hand? A. That is correct for one point. And the Crow primarily takes place in what U.S. city? Detroit. That is correct for two points. And a tie what? game. Tie game, yes. What political office does Ethan Rourke uh, hold in Sin City? Sorry, I had to make sure. I... Senator. That is correct for two more points. All right, and your final question in the category of comic book movies. What member of the team was working undercover for the main villain in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Dorian Gray. That is correct for two points. All right. So at the end of that, I have Kirk getting a score up to 11. Tony still at seven. Is that what you have, Dylan? Yes. All right. So we will bring back up the wheel for Tony's spin. Tony, your first spin is away. You land on opponent's choice. So we will bring back in Scott. Uh, do you guys want a recap of what is on the wheel? I think we know, right, Kurt? I think we know, yeah. Do Which we want to go with go what with? we were discussing? I think we go with uh, Audrey. Okay. Audrey Hepburn, right. please. All right. Uh, Tony, I will be giving you your questions in the category of Audrey Hepburn. So if I can find them, they're right at the top. There we go. All right. Your first question. In charade, what type of valuable item did Charles spend the stolen money on? Stamps. That is correct for two points. Who directed the Lavender Hill mob? Can I get multiple All choice? Right. Four. All right, your multiple choice options are A, Charles Crichton, B, Thorold Dickinson, C, Alexander McKenzie, or D, King Vidor. A. 
Okay. That is correct for one point. What is the name of the magazine that Maggie Prescott works for in Funny Face? Quality. That is correct for two points. What is the specific profession of Ariane's father in Love in the Afternoon? He's a private detective. That is exactly what we have for two points. Thank you for not just saying detective so that I don't have to lose my mind. And your final question, who plays OJ in Breakfast at Tiffany's? Martin Balsam. And that is correct for another two points. So at the end of round number two, I have Tony at 16, Kirk at 11. Is that what you have, Dylan? Yep. All right, then we are going to get into round number three, which is our pick your poison round. Our competitors are going to get to choose what they want for their one, two, three, and four point questions. The categories they can choose from today are Scorsese, Oscars, Robert Zemeckis, comedy, biopics, westerns, action adventure, and horror. So we will let them pick what they want, and we will be right back. All right, we are back. Our competitors have had the chance to choose what they want for their one, two, three, and four. Kirk has chosen his one in Oscars, his two in biopics, his three in horror, and his four in Scorsese, whereas Tony has chosen his one in Westerns, his two in Scorsese, his three in biopics, and his four in Oscars. Uh, we will start with Kirk as he is behind, uh, and we will go until either he is caught up or has been mathematically eliminated. Uh, since I gave Tony his questions in round two, I will give Kirk his questions in round number three. So, Kirk, your first question in Oscars. What best picture winner was directed by Rob Marshall? Chicago? That is unfortunately the correct answer um, <laughs> because Chicago winning Best Picture is a tragedy. Uh, as we get into your two point question in the category of biopics, who plays Johnny Cash's father, Ray Cash, in Walk the Line? Five, four, three. I don't know. Two. Don't have it. Uh, the answer is Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. So we will go to your three point question in horror. And your question What 2010s horror film follows a young woman who tries to protect her younger brother after a supernatural entity has attached itself to her mother? The boy. Two. That is incorrect. We were looking for lights out. Lights out. So here's the situation. Uh, if Kirk hits his four-point question, he will tie with Tony. Uh, otherwise, Tony will win via TKO. Kirk, your four-point question in Scorsese. What specific job does Catherine O'Hara's character Gail have in After Hours? Ice cream truck driver. <laughs> and that is correct for four points to avoid the TKO. Uh, so with that, we will go back to Tony. If Tony hits any of his questions, he will be the winner. Nice pull, Kirk. Thanks. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, your one-point question in Westerns is, in Django Unch Unchained, what was King Schultz's profession before he became a bounty hunter? Uh, doctor that is incorrect he was a dentist ah he was a dentist all right so we will go over to your two-point question in scorsese which is who plays frenchy in the departed ray winstone 
And your winner, Tony Durso. Ray Winstone is the correct answer. So with that being said, we will get into post-match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second-place finisher, Kirk. Uh, Kirk, uh, things I think just didn't go your way. You didn't want comic book movies. Uh, round one wasn't a lot of things that you really liked, and then just round three weren't the questions you were really hoping for but i still think you pulled it back you kept it close as you could uh that four point pull without any hesitation uh how do you feel not great um i mean i don't feel terrible because you know some days it's just not your day it's not like i had a chance to you know uh really pull ahead somewhere and i blew it it just wasn't my day uh yeah that round one was it feels i felt targeted by that round one actually but um it was what it was uh and, but I mean, there were a couple, I mean, Jareth and uh, Ava Dor, you know, doing that, if I could have got her first name, I would have had those two points. That would have made a big difference. But um, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, he was ready for Audrey Hepburn. Um, we discussed a lot which way to go. We, you know, we zigged, we should have zagged yeah. there for sure. Um, but well, I, yeah. I want to apologize for that because we definitely did have some back and forth. And I think Kirk was less convinced about Audrey. And I felt like with strength level questions, it would be tough. And I have no doubt it was tough. He obviously studied it. He may well have studied Kirk's other strength as well. But, um, you know, I apologize to Kirk for that because that obviously made a big difference in the match. And um, I do take some responsibility for that. So. Yeah, well, I, well, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cameron, but I believe is the tournament next or? I or? believe we will not be seeing Kirk again until the singles tournament. Uh, oh. With a record of six and six, you should be getting like a middle to higher middle seed. Uh, is there anyone you would like to face in the tournament if you could take your pick? No, um, I'll take it as it comes. I mean, I earned the spot I got, whatever, you know, whoever my match is, that's the way it goes. And um, just work on it between now and then, see what I can do. Absolutely. Well, all right. We will say goodbye to Kirk and Scott, and we will bring in Tony. Uh, Tony, that was a great match from you, uh, even with uh, opponent's choice going, I think, nine for ten in those questions, going seven for eight in round one. Uh, just a great match overall. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, feeling good. I... <laughs> I got panicky after missing my uh, one point question in round three. I was like, oh shit, this is how it happens. But uh, just because, uh, yeah, because I know Kirk, Kirk's a good player and he's, he's certainly a better player than the score showed today. Like I said, he's beaten me before. So I know exactly the quality of player he is. Uh, so I, I, I feel good because I, I was putting a lot of work in for this match and it thankfully paid off. So. Absolutely. So I believe uh, if I'm not mistaken, your next match, now that you're three and oh, uh, I cannot tell you who won because I don't know the order in which these matches are releasing, uh, but you will be playing the winner of either Ryan Payne or some guy you may have heard of called Kaiser Huang. <laughs> Uh, not sure yeah. if you're familiar with the man. Uh, so thoughts no. about uh, whatever that match could be? Uh, both are good players. Uh, Ryan, I've gone head-to-head -head in, in uh, classics before. Uh, Kaiser being my teammate. Uh, is I, I already know he's a top-notch player. Uh, I say this anytime if... If you're splitting teams between an A and B player, he's definitely the A player on our team. So I know I have my work cut out for me no matter who I play. So Absolutely. Well, we look forward to seeing you then. With that being said, we are going to wrap things up. Uh, Dylan, final thoughts on the match? Yeah, I mean, it, it really was kind of – he had a, Kirk had a bit of a rough go in round one, and it kind of did him in. But I think he still played, like, a really good game, especially in round two, where he got, I think, eight points, which was very impressive in, in a category that he didn't particularly want. But, yeah, it was a good match. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who Tony Pace is going forward out of the two, Ryan and uh, Ryan, uh, Kaiser. Not Ryan and Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great match, great performance from both people. Look forward to seeing what they do next. With that being said, we are going to get out of here. So 
I have been Cameron Holzman, and on behalf of Dylan Van Thine, Tony Durso, Scott Harvey, and Kirk Olkowski, thank you all for watching. Have a good whatever time of day it is. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Thank you, the lake. It would take a miracle. Bye-bye.